And we aren't done with islands yet, or China for that matter. The US is poking the dragon. We can give you two examples from this week. Number one is from the Philippines. It is conducting a military drill with America, their biggest ever. Now, this is an annual affair, only this time it's much bigger. It's the largest display of American firepower in Asia, and it is aimed at China. Number two, the US has sent a naval destroyer. It came close to the contested waters between China and the Philippines. This is the USS Milius. It's a guided missile destroyer from America's Seventh Fleet. It was seen patrolling around the Spratly Islands. This is off the coast of the Philippines. Both Beijing and Manila claim this territory, the Spratly Islands. The US warship came very close to the Mischief Reef. The Mischief Reef is a coral outcrop. It is part of the Spratlys. It is claimed by the Philippines, but Beijing has been controlling it since the 1990s. And they've built a base here. The Chinese have built a base on Mischief Reef. It's a base that is protected by missiles. The Americans came within a distance of 22 kilometers from this base. China saw this as a provocation. What does the US say? It says it is only exercising the freedom of navigation. But look at the timing. Just a few days back, the US angered China over Taiwan. It hosted Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen. We told you about it. She met US House Speaker Kevin McCarthy in Los Angeles. China kept warning against the meeting, but America went ahead anyway. And on Saturday, this is what a US official said in Taiwan. We are doing everything we can in Congress to speed up these sales and get the weapons that you need to defend yourself. And we will provide training to your military, not for war, but for peace. You heard him. Training a military not for war, but for peace. Typical twisted American logic. They're applying it with the Philippines as well. The Balikatan 2023 is the 38th and largest ever iteration of this exercise, with roughly about 17,700 troops from the AFP U.S. forces and Australian defense forces. It builds interoperability, enhances capabilities, and demonstrates mutual defense of the Philippine sovereign territory and promote peace and security in the region. Defense in the Indo-Pacific, protecting Taiwan from a potential invasion, reigning in an aggressive China. These are all important geopolitical goals. But let's not kid ourselves and say all of this is for peace. These are essentially power games. A protester in the Philippines who is opposed to these drills described their purpose in a clearer manner. Clearly, the war games are intended to project U.S. power in Asia. It's not intended to defend the Philippines. It's not intended to help the Philippines modernize. It's really intended to showcase U.S. power, and it is a preparation for war. So what, what happens after war games is that the U.S. is contemplating that the conflict will escalate. And now that we have more EDCA sites or forward operating bases, the Philippines will eventually be dragged into that kind of conflict, which is not necessarily in our interest, as I said. The U.S. has been building up its bases in the Philippines. In February, it got access to four additional bases. So now they have a total of nine military bases in the Philippines. The Americans have nine bases. Three of these new ones are in the northern island of Luzon. This is very close to Taiwan. It's the closest bit of land to Taiwan that is not a part of China. And one of the new US bases faces Taiwan. Another one faces the Spratly Islands. These bases are a win-win for both Manila and Washington. Let me explain. First, how do they help the Philippines? This is a territorial dispute with China, this region the Spratly Islands. They fall in the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines, but China claims them. So having US troops around helps the Philippines. They can keep China at bay. And what's in it for America? A military base within striking range of China. That's what the US gets. So it makes sense for both sides. The Chinese, of course, are not too thrilled about it. The facts are very clear. Out of self-interest, the U.S. maintains a zero-sum mentality and continues to strengthen its military deployment in the region. The result will inevitably be increased military tension and endangering regional peace and stability.
countries in the region should think deeply about what is appropriate and what is mutually beneficial. Beijing has been racking up enemies due to its aggressive posture. It is fighting neighbors to grab their land. India knows this. So do Japan, the Philippines and Vietnam. And the U.S. is taking advantage of these tensions. It is forming a ring of bases to hem China in. America is making allies, conducting drills and flexing its naval muscle around Beijing's turf. Why? Because the U.S. views China as the greatest threat to its world power status. It wants to limit China's influence. And why are China's neighbors going along with America's power projection? Because China is a regional bully. And some Asian nations think standing with a bigger bully is the best solution to keep the dragon in check. Now let's look at the most urgent domestic U.S. problem, gun terror, again. It happened yesterday. This time it was a 25-year-old bank employee. He took an assault-style rifle to work and went on a rampage. He killed five of his colleagues. Then he was gunned down by the police. And it gets worse. The attacker live-streamed his assault on Instagram. Nine people, including a 26-year-old police officer, have been injured. And this is a young officer. He just graduated from a police academy on the 31st of March. He was shot in the head. His condition is said to be critical. This is what the police and a witness said about the attack. At 838, there's a report of shots fired at Old National Bank. Officers on scene within three minutes. The suspect shot at officers. We then returned fire and stopped that threat. The suspect is deceased. This is the only time that I will mention the suspect name in this case. The suspect has been identified as Connor Sturgeon, white male, 23 years of age who was employed at O National Bank. His weapon of choice was the rifle. An assault rifle and just, we heard a click and the lady next to me turned around and said, what the hell? And then he just started shooting. Describe that again, everything that you saw. He just started, uh, he had a long assault rifle and he just started, you hear the, part, the, the, sh the sh shots just start firing. What did he look like? I didn't see his face. Were you in a meeting? Yeah, we were in the conference, back conference room. Whoever's next to me we got shot like and hit bloods on me from it. The investigation is on. The shooter had been associated with the bank for years, we are told. He interned there for three summers. Then, more than a year ago, he got a job at the same bank. Reports say recently he was told that he would be laid off. So yesterday, he walked into his workplace with a rifle, and during the morning meeting, he began his killing spree. He left a note behind for his parents. The police have found it. They've also asked Instagram to take down the shooter's live stream, the live video of the assault. And Meta, the company that owns Instagram, has said that it has complied with this request. The rest of the American system is going through the motions. Elected officials are offering condolences and lamenting the violence. President Biden is once again asking for strict controls on assault-style rifles. Let's be clear about what this was. This was an evil act of targeted violence. And to add to that tragedy, a few blocks away, shortly after this happened, another man lost his life and a woman was shot in a completely different act of targeted violence. The two incidents appear to be entirely unrelated, but they both took lives. Uh, today, we saw another senseless act of gun violence killed uh, at least four Americans and injured at least eight others, this time in Louisville, Kentucky. The President and the First Lady are praying for those killed and injured in the tragic shooting in Louisville and for the survivors who will carry the trauma for the rest of their lives. They are grateful for the LMPD officers who quickly and courageously stepped into the line of fire to save others. Biden posted this on social media yesterday, and he's right. Too many Americans are paying the price for the government's inaction. U.S. gun terror has claimed almost 5,000 lives just this year, 5,000 lives lost in the first three months of this year. Here's more data. In 2023 alone, 
There have been 146 mass shootings in America. A mass shooting is where four or more people have been killed. America has seen 146 such shootings in the first three months of this year. 14 incidents have been designated as mass murders. More than 4,900 people have been killed. More than 8,800 have been injured. And this is just the first 100 days of this year. Two weeks ago, we told you about the mass shooting in a school in Tennessee. And we fear we'll have more such stories to tell before the year is out because these incidents are absurdly common in the U.S. And whether for personal gain or at the behest of the gun lobby, politicians are not acting against U.S. gun terror. Meanwhile, the U.S. is coming under fire from allies for an old bad habit. America snoops on its friends. Yesterday, we told you about top secret documents that have been leaked. They showed which countries the U.S. was snooping on. Ukraine, Israel, South Korea, the UAE, among others. Needless to say, they're not happy about it. The U.S. is in damage control mode because it has a lot of damage to undo. America has been calling top officials in ally countries and telling them they should not be worried. U.S. officials have been in touch with uh, relevant allies and partners over the last couple of days at very high levels. And I'll leave it at that. So we're taking this very, very seriously. There is uh, uh, no uh, excuse for these kinds uh, of documents to be in the public domain. They don't deserve to be they, in, the, in the public domain. They deserve to be protected. So we're going to get to the bottom of this. Two takeaways from what the White House has said on the matter. First, the U.S. is in touch with its allies. And second, the problem is not the spying. The problem is the expose. How did it become public? That's what the U.S. is really worried about. Remember, this is one of the worst leaks for the U.S. in the 21st century. The last was perhaps in 2013, when Edward Snowden unleashed a storm by disclosing highly classified documents. America's allies are not amused, and they're saying it in so many words. We'll start with Israel. It is the America's most important partner in West Asia. The leaked documents say that Israel's intelligence agency Mossad was behind the protests against Prime Minister Netanyahu. They also talk about how Israel could supply lethal aid to Ukraine. In response, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office has released a statement. It is called the claims mendacious and without any foundation whatsoever. Then we have Australia, another important partner of the U.S. in the Indo-Pacific. This is what Australia had to say about the leaks. The issue of maintaining the security of information is critical to... Uh, the development of uh, national capability and to the trust and confidence across allies and partners. And I appreciate that uh, uh, this, by reports, is a serious uh, leak. It is being uh, investigated <clears throat> seriously by uh, US authorities and they are engaging with partners uh, in order to uh, better understand the potential consequences of, of that information being released into the public. That was the chief of Australia's Defence Forces calling the leak a serious one. Australia is part of the Five Eyes intelligence community. The US, the UK, Canada and New Zealand are also the members. These are five countries, including Australia, of Five Eyes that share intelligence. All members have asked for briefings from Washington, D.C., and they're yet to get a concrete response. At least two of these countries are very concerned. One of them said, and I'm quoting, we expect the US to share a damage assessment with us in the coming days, but we cannot wait for their assessment. Right now, we are doing our own. Another member was worried about the leak hurting Ukraine's interests. The leak talks about the war. It says the battle for Donbass region will be stuck in a stalemate throughout this year. It also details Ukraine's weaknesses and vulnerabilities. So while countries are measuring their public responses, they're privately quite frustrated with the Americans. South Korea, though, is an outlier. It says the leak will strengthen the alliance between U.S. and South Korea. It's a strange line to take. Listen to this. The two countries are an intelligence alliance. We closely cooperate in terms of intelligence activities on important issues. Therefore, we intend to take this incident as an opportunity to strengthen our trust and cooperative system. South Korea also says the leaked U.S. documents are largely fabricated. America itself does not agree. It says only some of the documents 
and not all may be fabricated. The opposition in South Korea is asking some serious questions. It has expressed strong regret over America's surveillance activities. Opposition leaders are calling it a clear violation of their national sovereignty. The U.S. is in a position where it does not have answers to some very basic questions, questions which the U.K., Germany, U.A. and Ukraine and also the EU are asking. Like how did these documents end up online? Who was responsible for this leak? And what is the U.S. doing to remove this information from social media? Washington has no answers. But here's what reports say. Apparently, the documents were first leaked on a platform called Discord in a chat room which is very popular with gamers. You heard that right. Highly classified U.S. intelligence documents first landed in a chat room full of gamers. Then they got picked up by the media. And this has been going on for weeks, apparently. Nobody in the American security apparatus got a whiff of what was happening until a week ago. This is both concerning and embarrassing for the United States. This is hardly the first time when they've been caught red-handed spying on friends and allies. The U.S. also spied on at least three French presidents from 2006 to 2012. In 2013, the U.S. was accused of spying on former German Chancellor Angela Merkel. It was monitoring the Chancellor's phone calls for many years. Subsequent leaks revealed that several German politicians were also being spied on. And these are just the most recent instances. Washington has been into such shady activities for a long, long time, but the world is only now realizing the scale of American espionage. And now it's time for Vantage Shots, images that tell the story. We're starting with Russia's, one of Russia's most active volcanoes. It erupted this morning, shooting a vast cloud of ash. Villages were smothered by volcanic dust. In South Korea, there have been wildfires. Hundreds of firefighters have been mobilized to contain them, but strong winds and dry weather are making matters worse. In Northern Ireland, a number of masked people attacked a police vehicle in Londonderry. They threw petrol bombs. This is ahead of U.S. President Joe Biden's visit to Belfast. And finally, we'll take you back in history. What happened on the 11th of April? In 2003, U.S. and Kurdish forces took Iraq's third city of Mosul. They did so without a fight. Images show them sealing victory in the north. We're leaving you with this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, 
it was a very big deal to write a constitution and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the Colonial Loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting.